lentils or a steak. After working out, should I have a whey or soy protein shake? Or maybe pea or rice protein instead? How much protein do I really need? And what is the best source to get it from? Don't worry if you're confused right now. Especially after the Game Changers movie came out and visited tons of debunks, it is hard to understand what is really true. In this video we will compare the protein quality of animals versus vegan protein sources based on current scientific evidence to help you optimize your diet and reach your goals. Before we talk about quality, we have to talk about quantity, meaning how much protein we actually need. One of the main arguments in the Game Changer movie is that you don't need that much protein, even as an athlete, and that you can get all the protein you need from plants. And James Wilkes, who is one of the stars in the movie, emphasizes this point again on the Joe Rogan podcast, and cites studies like this one, claiming that 20 to 25 grams of protein per meal are enough to maximize muscle protein synthesis. I looked up the study and found that what James made seem like the definitive conclusion was in fact the introduction. In this review the researchers showed different studies. One study for instance really only shows a minor increase in muscle protein synthesis with increased protein intake after single joint exercise. But another study found a significant increase after a whole body workout when they compared 20 grams of protein with 40 grams. They also cite studies that show that after a workout 70 grams of protein is better in preventing protein breakdown than 40 grams. And another study that shows significantly greater gains with 3.3 grams per kilogram daily compared to 1.3 grams. Now the researchers actually concluded that 1.6 gram per kilogram body weight is the minimum and the upper daily intake would be at 2.2 grams per kilogram. Now you can surely hit this on a vegan diet by eating a lot of lentils and tofu. But something I noticed was that the researchers kept mentioning high quality protein. So what makes a protein a high quality protein? There are actually measurements for it. One of it is the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score or short PDCAAS. A score of 1 means that the protein provides 100% or more of the essential amino acids required. Now you can see in this table that plant proteins, with the exception of soy, are relatively low on the PDCAAS. But to be fair, different plant proteins can be combined to make up for the missing amino acids. As an example, wheat protein has a very low score because it barely contains lysine. On the other hand, it has more than enough methionine. Now for pea protein, it's the other way around. It contains barely any methionine, but more than enough lysine. Which makes combining them both a decent source of protein, at least if we only consider this score. However, there's another factor to consider here, which is nicely illustrated by soy protein, that has a score comparable to whey protein and even higher than beef. Still, there are many studies showing that when comparing soy with beef, or soy with whey protein, or soy with egg protein, we see that soy protein does not stimulate muscle protein synthesis like the animal proteins. There are two potential reasons for this. The less likely one comes down to the old concern that soy negatively affects sex hormone levels in men. A study from 2018 actually looked at this. For that study, previously untrained college students were asked to do resistance training three times a week and either consumed a soy protein shake, a whey protein shake or a placebo shake that contained maltodextrin. What the researchers found was that after 12 weeks of training, the group that consumed the whey protein shake showed significantly increased testosterone levels, which wasn't the case for the soy protein group or the placebo group. To be fair again, the bioactive estrogen levels seemed unaffected and in the discussion the researchers point out that changes in serum testosterone are not predictive of changes in muscle fiber size. So there might be even more to it that explains why soy does not stimulate as much of a protein muscle synthesis as the animal proteins. The other reason why plant protein sources are often inferior to animal sources is that the leucine content in plant protein is usually lower compared to animal protein. 
In a study published by Norton et al., the researchers found that muscle protein synthesis was the greatest with whey protein. Next in line are eggs, then soy and wheat comes last. Now if we add the leucine concentrations, it becomes obvious that higher leucine concentrations equal greater muscle protein synthesis. The researchers even conclude their study by saying, these findings demonstrate that leucine content is a critical factor for evaluating the quantity and quality of proteins necessary at a meal for stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. Leucine is a muscle switch that tells our body to build muscles by triggering mTOR and it is estimated that you need at least 2 grams of leucine per meal to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Unfortunately, most plant protein sources are relatively low in leucine, except for tofu, which comes close to beef. Now, legumes like beans and lentils are fair sources of leucine as well by providing about half the leucine concentration compared to beef or milk if you normalize for calories. But keep in mind that the PDCAAS is lower in legumes, meaning that there are other essential amino acids missing. I'm not saying that it isn't possible to get enough essential amino acids and adequate muscle protein synthesis on a vegan diet, but it's certainly harder compared to an omnivore diet, and the movie The Game Changers makes it seem a little too easy. One of the most quoted sentences from the movie comes from the strongman Patrick Baboumian. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? I was curious what his normal day of eating would look like, as he surely needs to consume more protein than the average person. In his full day of eating, he actually consumes about 260 grams of protein just from protein shakes. To be fair, most athletes supplement, but 260 grams of protein from just shakes seems extreme, especially if we consider his quote from the movie, which leaves the impression that you can get enough protein from just eating whole plants. Again, I'm not saying that it isn't possible on a vegan diet, but supplementation is required and probably more so than on a diet plan that includes some animal products. After all, a study found that the average protein intake of vegans is at only 82 grams per day. Omnivores, on the other hand, had an average intake of 112 grams per day, which is still below the recommendation for athletes, but closer. There are at least two more factors that we need to take into consideration when we talk about protein. Studies actually found that our protein demand increases as we age. And the same is also true when we are in a caloric deficit and want to minimize muscle loss. Okay, I try to be as unbiased as possible during my research for this video, but my personal experience was similar to the studies I presented here. About 3 years ago, I moved to the United States and reduced my intake of animal products to a very minimum due to financial reasons. I tried to gain muscles by basically only eating beans and lentils, and what I got was digestive issues instead of muscle gains. I probably could have done it better, but I am back in Germany now and can afford organic animal products, and gaining muscles has become much easier without any side effects. I hope you found this video helpful and can implement this knowledge in your diet plan. Here are two more videos that you might enjoy. Thank you for watching and see you next time.